today's Railway Fundamentals video is going to look at a device which revolutionised railway signalling in Great Britain from the early years of the 20th century. That's the track circuit. In simplest possible terms, what the device does is to detect the presence of an engine or a railway vehicle on a section of track by passing an electrical current along the track and if the vehicle is there the vehicle short circuits the current between the rails and the track circuit detects that short circuit and knows that there's a train there. There are various more modern versions of track circuits, radio frequency track circuits for example, which operate in a rather more complex way. We're going to look at the traditional electrical track circuit as installed from the turn of the 20th century in Britain. Track circuits were actually an American invention and were resisted quite strongly by signal engineers in the UK. There are articles in signalling magazines from the first decade of the 20th century where senior engineers decry the invasion of this American idea, partly I suspect because they weren't that familiar with electrical materials in the same way that they were with devices based on, on purely mechanical operation. This video is being recorded in May 2020, only a few days after the 105th anniversary of the Kintins Hill accident, which really changed that view because Kintins Hill was an accident which could have been prevented had track circuits been installed on the lines through Quintins Hill which would have either reminded the signalman of the presence of the train into which he signalled another train, or actually prevented that if some of the later iterations of the way track circuits work were installed. We're going to look at track circuits over a couple of videos. Um, we're going to start with the principles in this one of how they operate. It would be possible to do that with diagrams. Here is the 1960 two version of the Western Region Safe Working of Trains course and you can see it has a page or two about track circuits and the diagrams are quite complex. At the suggestion of a WSR TV viewer we found a different way of explaining track circuits and here I'd just like to pay tribute to Bob Livermore who's one of the West Somerset Railway volunteer signalmen and until fairly recently was employed by the company as an S&T technician. We discussed how that could be done, and he has produced the delightful practical demonstration of track circuits, which my assistant is about to demonstrate to you. We will also be using this talk to introduce another concept that's very important in railway operation and railway equipment, which is failing safe. Railway designers attempt to design equipment that if it fails, leaves the railway in a safe position as opposed to fails and leaves the situation more dangerous or less protected. And we'll see that in the practical demonstration that's coming up. The alternative way that's put is sometimes to refer to a right side failure and a wrong side failure. A right side failure is one that leaves the situation not working but protected and a wrong side failure is one where the equipment or position or operation is left less protected. So for now, I'm going to hand over to my assistant who's going to talk you through the demonstration piece that Bob Livermore has produced for us. So let's start by describing what we're looking at. So here we have a piece of railway track and the rest of the equipment is set up to simulate how a track circuit would be used to detect a railway vehicle standing on that piece of track. We have a mains power supply transformed down to 24 volts, which is a voltage commonly used in railway signalling. And then effectively we have two circuits. So we have what I'm going to refer to as a detection circuit and a display circuit. And let's just describe those two separately. The detection circuit is putting current up 
one side of the railway track and back down the other. But before it comes back, it passes through contacts on a relay. And we'll talk about that in a moment. The display circuit is, is this one. And the current, when there's current flowing in the circuit, flows up through the relay and back again. And in this case, through this uh, red arrangement, which has in fact got two electrical bulbs in it. And that is simulating the display that would be seen for this piece of track in a West Somerset Railway signal box. We have two forms of display. We, at the three principal signal boxes, Bishop's Lydiard, Williton and Minehead, we have what are called fully track circuited diagrams. So the illustrated diagram above the frame has a number of what are called lozenges in, which are rather like this display. And they, for a piece of occupied track, light up to show that there's a train on them. The two smaller signal boxes at Blue Anchor and Crocombe only have track circuits through some of the point work in the signal boxes. And they don't therefore have that complete illuminated display. They have swing arm track circuit indicators, like the one you're looking at now from Crocombe signal box. That displays in a different way. When there is no vehicle on the piece of track it relates to, the red oblong arm sits at 45 degrees and alongside it can be read track clear. When a vehicle occupies the track circuit that this indicator relates to, the arm swings to the horizontal, the words track clear are covered up and the words track occupied appears. When the vehicle has passed clear, the arm swings back, and we know that once again that piece of track is clear. But they're doing the same thing. Um, we could have mounted a swing arm indicator on the board and used the pair of contacts from the relay to operate that in just the same way we've been describing. Now it's worth saying a word about a relay. All a relay is, is an electrical switch. And they can be manufactured and set up in a number of different ways. What this relay does is when there is current flowing to it through the detection circuit, it holds open a pair of contacts on the display circuit. So the, the circuit is not made, those contacts are open. When the de detection circuit is de-energised, as far as the relay is concerned, when the current is not reaching the relay, it doesn't have that action, and it lets the pair of contacts on the display circuit close. And so the display circuit will be complete and will be able to operate. So let's see that in action. The change from the previous shot is that now we have connected to the main circuit and there is current flowing but the display doesn't look very different because now we have the circumstance I was just describing so we have current flowing in the detection circuit all the way up through the relay and back again and that relay is holding open the contacts on the display circuit so now let's bring along a railway vehicle I apologize to Great Westerners that what we have here is a southeastern Chatham P class there we are, it's on the piece of track and the track circuit is doing its work and identifying that the vehicle is there. So if we take it off, we put it on, we take it off, we put it on. So with it on there, and of course it works anywhere on the track as long as it's making a good contact. What's happening now? Uh, why is the display circuit working? Well, the current in the detection circuit is running up one rail, but now it's not getting to the relay at the end. It's running through, up through the wheels, across the chassis, and down through the other wheels of the locomotive, and completing the circuit that way. So it's short-circuited that circuit. And there is now not current in this part of the detection circuit. It's not reaching the relay. Therefore, that pair of contacts inside the relay that relate to the display circuit are closed, and there is current flowing in the display circuit, 
and so the bulbs are alight. Is it something special about a locomotive? Well, here's just an ordinary screwdriver. And if we short circuit the track, then it operates in just the same way. And anywhere on the track will do. I and mean, that's another point about a track circuit, is that that locomotive can be anywhere on that track circuit. It can be there, or there, or there. And the signalman doesn't know where on a track circuit there's a vehicle, if there's a vehicle there. It can be anywhere in that particular piece of track circuit. And we'll look in a later video at how we need to split up a layout so that the track circuits are usefully split up to help the signalman and the signalling devices operate trains successfully. Of course the contacts from that relay can do other things. So the fact that this vehicle is now on a track circuit, if there was a signal behind it here, the contacts from that relay could be used to prevent that signal being cleared and protect the train. They also, if there were a set of points in this piece of track, that the contacts from the relay could be used to make sure that the points are not moved while the locomotive moves along the track. And you'll have seen, if I move the locomotive a little bit, you can see that the track circuit can bob a little, as it's called, when it goes on and comes off, because there needs to be a good electrical connection across the two. That's fine generally with a locomotive, nice and heavy, one has to take account, though, sometimes that lighter vehicles, and track circuit technology is really quite good these days, but lighter vehicles like a single wagon or a Wickham trolley might not operate track circuit successfully. And there are usually regulations to take that into account. The other factor might be if the rails are not clean and the locomotive therefore might not be seen by the track circuit. In, in the introductory section, I talked about fail-safe, which is part of railway design, or should be. And what that means is that devices like this should fail-safe. So let's take the locomotive out of the way for a moment. Here is the track circuit doing its job. There's nothing on this piece of track, and therefore it's correctly indicating to the signalman that this track is not occupied. What would happen if someone came along and cut the wires accidentally? A, a, you know, a ballast regulator or a temper came through and cut the wires. Well, we can simulate that. We have a crocodile clip at this end, connecting this end of the detection circuit. If we disconnect it, you'll see that the display circuit lights. Because, of course, what's happening in this circumstance is that now the circuit, the detection circuit is broken, current is not reaching the relay at the end, those contacts on the display circuit side of the relay have closed and the lights have lit. And that is giving an indication just as if there was something set on it. And that's failing safe, because the safe condition is it looks occupied, therefore the signalman will either know not to or not be able to send another train into this section, not being certain that it's clear. And the signalman would go through a process with the following train of having the line inspected to see whether the line was clear before he concluded that this was an equipment failure and not actually something that had appeared. Who knows? Somebody might have dropped a car off a bridge, done something unfortunate, pushed a vehicle out of a siding onto the track, until you inspect, you can't know. And of course, exactly the same thing could occur if we had a rail break through this section. That would break the circuit as well. So one conclusion from a track circuit failure sometimes is that there might be a track defect to be found. And of course, if we can then solve the track defect, things work normally. The system is now correctly showing that the track's not occupied, current is reaching the relay and that's working correctly. There's a fail-safe element to the display side of the circuit as well, and you'll see that we've got two bulbs working, and the lozenges that we use in sig signal boxes 
usually have two filaments in exactly that way, so that if one fails, the other one will stay alight. But, of course, there are ways that the system could fail, not safe. So there is the locomotive on the track. Were we to turn off the power, now the signalman has no indication. But in that circumstance, he would usually have no indication in all his track circuits. That's why signal boxes are usually supplied with some version of an uninterruptible power supply. They often have very large batteries or accumulators, and they'll have 12, 24, or even longer hours of time to work before power was lost such that the equipment wouldn't work. But plainly that's not a circumstance that we'd want to get to, and you would want an indication of a power failure in that way. You could also have the same circumstance if there was a break in the display circuit side of the operation. Plainly that's inside equipment that's likely to be better protected than outside equipment on the track. But that also potentially would be not failing safe. Another way that they're sometimes stated is a right side failure and a wrong side failure. So a right side failure is one where if there's a failure it's occurred safely and a wrong side failure is one where it's occurred in a circumstance that's made the railway less safe. For let's, let's put our track circuit back on again. So that is the operation of a track circuit. Thank you once again to Bob Livermore for creating that demonstration item for us. I hope that's been interesting. That's the end of this demonstration of the operation of a track circuit. We will be producing a later video in the series talking about some other aspects of track circuits out on the ground which will build on the knowledge that we've been conveying today. Thank you for watching. As usual in the Railway Fundamental series, there will be 10 self-test questions to be found on the West Somerset Railway Association website. Do have a try and see how well you've done.